and welcome to Talk AFCB and welcome back here to the channel guys. That's right, it is indeed a double upload day. I'm back again here for another video. I hope you all enjoyed earlier on when we are talking there about the title race. Barcelona coming up against Real Madrid. It is such an exciting run in for both teams with so many challenges that once again we are going to be talking about in today's video too. We're also going to be talking about training, about potentially fans being allowed inside the stadium before the end of the current campaign and also I'm going to be addressing the worrying reports surrounding Arthur Mello and exactly what we can expect going into that game against Mallorca. It's all coming up in today's video. Thanks for joining me. Let's get to it. Because indeed, the days are indeed counting down now. We're Tuesday, not too far away from the weekend and not too far away now from Barcelona's return. We've all waited, haven't we, for this moment? We've all been waiting week upon week upon week. Things have looked bleak. Things have looked as though maybe they're not going to get better. Maybe we're not going to emerge from the tunnel that we're in. But we have. We are nearly there now, guys. And certainly later on this week, there's going to be so much content coming up ahead of that game against Mallorca. The players did indeed, though, train once again this morning. No problems whatsoever whatsoever to report from this morning's training session. Messi again was present. He was there with the group. Absolutely fine. No problems. And the players will return to training once again tomorrow morning, which will mean there we've kicked off the game week with three successive training sessions, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with Kike Setien now maximising every available moment with the full group ahead of a vital return to action. We have also received over the past few days official confirmation from La Liga concerning the exact dates and times of match day 30 and match day 31 from the upcoming remaining games in La Liga with Sevilla against Barcelona set for a Friday night clash there under the lights at the Ramon Sanchez Pijuan and that there as you can see is coming just three days after our game against Leganes. We're playing Leganes on the Tuesday, we then have Sevilla away, such a difficult game on the Friday and and that certainly is a quick turnaround. We then have a slightly bigger break between match day 30 and 31 as Barcelona will be facing Athletic at Tuesday at 10 p.m. live from the camp now on that day. But as you can see already, from the fixtures that have been announced, we already knew they were going to be in very quick succession. And even as soon there as that Leganes game, you're going to be thinking there about some rotation. You're going to be thinking about players that maybe we need to save for that vital trip there away at Sevilla, one of our biggest tests. And that's what we're going to see over the course of the season and that's why I wouldn't get too bogged down with starting lineups. I've seen a few people getting a little bit nervous seeing a few names in lineups maybe they wouldn't have expected to see and they're not really happy at what maybe Setien is going to be trying but what I'm going to say is this with the lineups don't be too concerned don't be too bogged down there with who's in the starting lineup at least in the first few games because believe me over the course of the run-in these 11 games to come and the Champions League we're going to see a lot of rotation we're going to see a lot of subs coming off the bench remember now we can make five changes you could nearly change half of the team that you actually start the game with. So believe me, we're going to see lots of changes, lots of different variations during this time. I really do hope that everybody will get their chance. But will Arthur... That's another question. Because on that topic, we do now move on to the future of Arthur Mello, which is something that we have discussed on the channel over the past few weeks. I've said time and time again, Arthur doesn't want to go. He is so, so clear on that. Publicly, he's announced it. Privately, he's told the club that he has no intention of leaving. And even right now, all of the people around Arthur are still saying the same thing. He wants to succeed at Barcelona. But Raquan did come out last night with a few interesting remarks there around Arthur, and in particular there, surrounding a crucial week that he has with regard to his future at Barcelona. Because Juve, in terms of their stance with Arthur, nothing has changed. They still want to sign him. They're still trying to get him in there as part of that deal for us to get Pjanic. That deal that really doesn't make any sense. But Juventus want Arthur and they are still determined to get him. And Raquan say that in particular this weekend, we need to keep an eye on that game against Mallorca. Because they say Arthur's participation in that game, that's going to be a big, big point of interest. Because is he going to start the game and if he doesn't start the game is he going to come off the bench or is he not going to be involved at all are we going to see here Arthur Mello actually being pushed out being forced out because there have been a few worrying rumors that have basically come out and said the board have told Arthur that if he doesn't want to go if he refuses to leave the club he may not receive the amount of game time that he's hoping for at Barcelona and I just think that for me it's ridiculous not only does it not make sense in terms of Arthur Mello he's a great player he's an exciting talent he's 
is somebody who does fit in our midfield. We can use him. We can use their, the qualities that he can bring in our team. But it's not just there about the individual. It's about the whole squad. We need Arthur right now. There's no good sacrificing here a player just because you want to try and force him out. Because we're going to need, like we've said before, every single player in these last 11 games. We can't afford to cast somebody aside. We cannot afford to do that to any player, let alone somebody like Arthur Mello. And I just think there, if the board have said that, if now they're going to start interfering with team selections, if we see Arthur not involved for any other game against Mallorca, it would be very, very worrying for me. Because that shouldn't happen. The board cannot interfere like that. They cannot put their own interests ahead of the club. And that's what they'd be doing if they start interfering there in who Setien can and can't select. I really do hope that on Saturday against Mallorca, either from the start or coming off the bench in the early stages there of a second half, we need to see Arthur on the field. Because as we know, he can have an impact. We'll need that. And if we do indeed speak about another Brazilian at Barcelona in the form of Felipe Coutinho, because a few weeks ago, and indeed over the past few months, Chelsea have been one of the clubs very heavily linked with Coutinho. He's certainly set on a move back to the Premier League. If he does leave Barcelona, he does want to go there back to England, where of course he played very successfully at Liverpool. And Chelsea did appear to be one of the most likely destinations for him this coming summer. But... That's not going to happen. According to ESPN and several sources here also in the UK, Coutinho will not be joining Chelsea at any point, quite simply because, number one, apparently his wages, his wage demands there, and also what he's currently on at Barcelona is extremely high and not something there they're willing to pay. But also because right now Chelsea are certainly going down other avenues. They're very, very close there to sealing a deal for RB Leipzig's Timo Werner. And also now they're also pursuing another German, very, very highly talented, Kai Havertz, who's also going to cost them an awful lot of money if they do indeed get him. So Coutinho, in terms of Chelsea, certainly doesn't appear to be an option for them anymore. And every single club there that pulls out of the Coutinho race, it's another destination that he can't go. And all the time, Barcelona's options to offload Coutinho, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I still do believe the next season, Coutinho may well end up staying in the team. But I do want to end today's news roundup here by discussing fans inside of stadiums, because although it appeared at the start of this pandemic that we may not see fans inside stadiums until well into 2021, as the days have gone on, as we've started now, hopefully, to come out the other side of it all, there have been a few rumours that date is going to keep coming forward and forward and forward. And in particular now, a few murmurs have started to circulate about potentially fans being allowed inside stadiums before the current season is even over. And it all started there with Celta V they actually went to La Liga and they were saying, look, we'd like to already allow fans inside the stadium. As soon as football returns, we'd like there a few to be inside Belaidos. And basically La Liga went back to Celta Vigo and they said, look, we can't just let you have fans inside the stadium. We can't just allow one club out of the 20 to have fans. That would be unfair. It's not right to do that at this stage. But Cope do say, they come out with a very interesting report that by June the 29th, La Liga are aiming to allow 30% of your capacity inside of stadiums for every club across the league. And if that did indeed come into effect on the 29th of June, that there would mean that it would be in sign for the final six match days of the current season. And for Barcelona, that could mean there that up to 30,000 fans could be allowed inside the stadium for our final three home games of the campaign. And one of those home games is Atletico Madrid at home. It is going to be interesting to keep an eye on. Towards the end of the season, matches may suddenly be able to be in front of fans. And so that there, guys, does bring us to an end in today's news roundup. But like I say, I just want to keep you fully updated on what I'm going to plan to bring you over the coming days because we are all so, so excited there for the return of football, for the return there, of course, of Barcelona. Now, what I'm going to have coming up for you, of course, is the usual match preview. That might come to you a little bit earlier than usual because after that match preview, I'm going to be bringing you there the tactical aspect of the game against Mallorca. We're also going to be talking in depth about how Kike Setien could line up in Saturday's game. Game, but I'm also going to bring you, maybe in that video, maybe there as a separate one, everything Kike Setien says before the game, what he says, what insights he gives ahead of that Mallorca game. I'm going to try and bring you all the possible build-up that I possibly can. And tomorrow as well, we are going to be discussing some Barcelona players who in the games to come have really got to prove a point for the sake 
of their Barcelona careers. So believe me, over the next few days, you are not going to be bored. And anything leading up to that game against Mallorca, you are going to hear about it. Thanks as always, guys, for your incredible support. If you haven't seen the video from earlier on about the title race, please do go and check that out and let me know what you think. It really does seem set for a fascinating few weeks to come. Us up against Real Madrid with no margin for error. It's going to be massive. It's going to be intense. It's going to be high pressured. But we are going to enjoy and savour every moment of Barcelona being back and in competitive action. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Thanks, like I say, for your tremendous support. I'll be back soon with plenty more to come. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Barca. Oh, no, 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 no.